Hey guys, welcome to the first Q&A video from the Reaper blog. I'm John, and I have five questions to answer today. First question. Since Reaper's plugins aren't necessarily the fanciest looking ones, could you show us some good and effective ways to use them so we can get inspired? Well, I'm going to be doing more videos. Uh, I'd like to have a blog post and a video for each plugin, uh, each of Reaper's included plugins, and, um, and show you tricks with each of them but for now, uh, let me just say uh, Sidechain, uh, Regacomp, and Regate, um, and any of the other ones that can be sidechained. Uh, there's a lot you can do with that. There's also parameter modulation. You could take ReEQ and turn it into a dynamic EQ with the uh, audio input detection. Yeah, they really don't look fancy, but um, that doesn't, it doesn't distract you you don't think that they are colored because they have a fancy retro graphic. Your perception of the sound isn't changed by the way that they look. Hope that answers your questions. Uh, stay tuned for um, more videos. I'm confused by all the panning and pan law options. What do you use and why? So I like the stereo pan option, which gives you two knobs, one for balance of the left and right. You also get a stereo width control. Uh, so 100% is the default. It's just as it was recorded. You can move it to zero for mono and minus 100 for reverse stereo. For the pan law, I use zero dB, which uh, basically if you're routing one track into another, into another, into another, you don't get a volume increase or decrease going through each stage. It stays the same. And for me, that's what makes the most sense. Um, a lot of people have other preferences based on what they like to hear from a console and um, a minus 3 dB pan law might make more sense for them. I'd love to know more about the saturation distortion tools in Reaper. Can you tell me if I'm crazy for thinking nonlinear isn't reporting latency correctly? Will I ever figure out bad bus mojo? Well, I don't think you'll ever figure out bad bus mojo and I don't think I will either. Uh, that thing's just too weird, too complicated and totally unintuitive, in my opinion, and um, and that kind of sucks because I'm, I'm sure that it is useful. I just can't figure it out. So there are a bunch of saturation plugins uh, in the JS folder. So there's um, JS saturation, there's nonlinear, there's Bad Buzz Mojo, and a few others, um, some more like guitar distortion sort of things. Um, and I think there's also some that you can find in the Reaper stash or, or just uh, linked to in the, uh, in the forum. The JS plugins really need more documentation. Even a simple description of what they are um, is really all we need to use them more. If you think nonlinear or any plugin isn't reporting latency correctly, try sending something through it, rendering it to a new track, and then comparing the sample offset. Um, Either it's a bug with uh, delay compensation or it's a bug with the plugin. Um, you should be able to get that fixed in a Reaper update, uh, but you have to send a bug report. I haven't tested it myself. Next question, how do I effectively create and use a tempo map? A tempo map is all of the changes in tempo and meter through a song. So uh, verse is 120, a 4-4, four, four. the chorus might have a wild change and go from and go to 5.4 at 160 beats per minute. You use a tempo map to um, set your grid resolution, uh, to get your grid lines lining up with the music, and also your click track to follow uh, all the tempo changes. Um, making a tempo map works best if you go from left to right, uh, beginning of the song to the end. Inserting changes in the middle kind of messes things up later on in the song, and um, and things can get messy. So ideally you work from left to right and you don't have to change anything in the middle. I will do a video on making a tempo map based on a demo recording without a click. I'll also show how to warp a song to fit a certain tempo map. And the last question, there doesn't seem to be a good source for using sidechain with third-party plugins. So how is it done and can it be done? Well, it can be done, but it totally depends on the plugin manufacturer. So for Reaper to be able to sidechain um, 
let's say side side chain compression or use a side chain input filter that plugin needs to have four inputs so you don't see that too often uh, one from stillwell audio uh, the rocket compressor that has four inputs so you can um, send a different track into that use that track to detect uh, what to compress and then apply the compression to the original track so I probably explained that really badly, but I think you already know what side chaining is. With Reaper 5, they're going to add VST3 support. Uh, there's already a bunch of plugins that will allow you to do side chaining in their VST3 format. Just having VST3 support isn't going to mean that every plugin will uh, have an available side chain input. It's still up to the plugin manufacturer to add that in. And they probably could have done that with a VST 2.4 version. Well, that's it for this Q&A video. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and subscribe to the channel. Check out reaperblog.net for more tutorials. And, uh, and we'll do this again when we get to another 200 subscribers. All right, thanks guys, bye.